Good morning. Today I'm coming coming from a Quaker Lake camp. We're having our uh, yearly picnic here, and I wanted to get here a little bit early uh, to share uh, share a few words with you. And um, the the topic that uh, I was uh, going to talk about today. Uh, a little bit later in worship had to do with uh, discipleship and fishing and so I do plan on doing a little fishing today um, but as you can see uh, beautiful day temperatures are awesome and uh, Jesus is awesome uh, but anyway uh, let's let's have a little word of prayer before we begin Father God we thank you for today we thank you for this beautiful weather thank you for this beautiful place Lord, just ask that your presence be here amongst us today, and Lord, we just thank you for everything and uh, for your gracious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all that he has done for us and continues to do for us. Lord, let us be uh, good stewards of what you've given us, and let us be uh, ever-willing disciples to carry out uh, your your message and your kingdom here on earth. I want to pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, today, uh, if you got your Bibles, or, or join with me in Matthew chapter 4, and uh, Jesus is uh, starting his, or continuing in his, uh, his public ministry, and there's a little bit of time that's, uh, that's passed uh, uh, by the time we get to Matthew chapter 4 uh, in his public ministry. There's, we don't know a, a ton about the, the first, first little bit of his public ministry, but uh, Luke kind of fills us in on some things, but as far as uh, where we are in Matthew, this is a little bit, uh, just a little bit after he started. And so one of the things that uh, we, we're going to look at today is Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. And uh, Jesus had, uh, uh, had moved down to uh, Galilee, down, at to, down towards the... Um, uh, to the coastline there uh, in uh, Capernaum and this was kind of called a uh, the, it was like a triangle of, of cities here and, and Capernaum was kind of in the in the midst of uh, this this triangle and uh, this this really became kind of like a base camp for um, a lot of Jesus's ministry uh, a lot of his his miracles happened here uh, and so you know when you when you look at the Gospels you really see uh, a, a lot of activity going on here, so it's, it's no surprise that uh, Jesus would have called his first disciples here. And so I want to look at this uh, just for a few minutes, and I want to talk about, I want to explain uh, basically the roles of a disciple and the, the roles of a rabbi in, uh, in, in this first century, and then also um, show how this correlates to uh, the continuing mission and ministry that we're to carry out today as disciples of Jesus Christ. So we're going to begin by reading Matthew chapter 4, starting with verse 18. And it says, While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. So, you know, this tells us of their occupation, this... Uh, this uh, gives us an, uh, an indication of what they were doing. Uh, they were staying busy. Obviously, fishermen uh, stay busy, uh, you know, because that day, you know, if you, if you didn't catch anything, you didn't eat. So this was a fishing town. Uh, and so, you know, they had to fish and they had, they had to make sure that uh, they, uh, they stayed fed. And, and also that, but also, you know, they weren't just providing for themselves. They were uh, providing for, for others in the community uh, possibly going to market and selling some, so they had they had quite a task ahead of them, and a lot of people make the mistake of saying that these were uneducated, dumb fishermen, and that's not that's not the case. Uh, with most uh, with most Jewish boys, uh, they kind of grew up going to rabbi school, and so uh, these disciples, uh, Peter and Andrew, they would have certainly uh, went to. Uh, rabbi school there in, in the uh, in the local synagogue and they would have studied to a certain point and then uh, it would have got to a certain point where the uh, the the teachers there would have said you know what you just don't have what it takes uh, or you don't you can't cut it as uh, as a potential rabbi so we're gonna have to cut you loose and 
that was uh, that was honestly that's just the way it was. Uh, the uh, the the girls uh, would typically uh, boys and girls would go to rabbi school, and then the girls at a certain age, uh, usually around 12 years of age, uh, they would automatically be sent out of the school because that was the end of where they were supposed to go. At that point, uh, their families and eventually their husband or uh, their husband or family who they might wind up with later on after they got married. Uh, it would be their responsibility, it would be the husband's responsibility uh, to, uh, to teach what he had learned uh, in, uh, in rabbi school or going to the synagogue. So, um, you know, they had a responsibility as well. But the men, uh, if they could cut it, uh, they would continue going and then they would get deeper into the, the study of the, of the Torah, the Psalms, uh, the history, uh, and then eventually into the prophets. Uh, and so they would, they would cover the expanse of the Old Testament scriptures as we know them. And the rabbis would give their uh, views, interpretations. So uh, just to say that these were ignorant uh, fishermen is not necessarily true. Uh, they were uh, fairly intelligent people. Um, you know, even by our standards today, they would have been uh, considered uh, pretty intelligent people. So uh, let's, not, let's not make that mistake. No, they may not have been rabbis, but um, if, uh, if God was really looking at us today, any of us, uh, would we really be any more worthy than these, uh, these early or first disciples would be? And the answer would be no. Um, you know, Jesus shows a lot of grace and he calls a lot of us out of uh, different places. And uh, so that's what he did here with these disciples. But getting back on, on topic here, um, so Jesus walks, but he's walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he goes down there. And a lot of people think, well, you know, this is, this is the first time he's ever saw these guys. Well, it's not, because if you go back and you, and you look through the other, the other three Gospels, there's, there's clues there that tell us that uh, Jesus, uh, they knew Jesus, uh, that they had seen Jesus before. Uh, John the Baptist had, uh, had introduced them to Jesus. Uh, and so the, uh, the, these early disciples already had somewhat of a relationship with Jesus. They actually left. I think it's the Gospel of John actually tells us that these disciples actually left John to go follow Jesus. So uh, this was not the first time they had met. So uh, Jesus had been with them. And then there's even some who, uh, there's some who speculate based on some scriptural things that uh, perhaps these, these brothers might even have been uh, some sort of cousins or, uh, or had some sort of family tie to Jesus. So, uh, you know, we don't know that for 100% for fact, but I think it's an interesting thing. Obviously, if they were family, uh, we know that Jesus and John the Baptist were family, but uh, it, it could have been. Uh, they, they possibly could have been family. So we'll just we'll roll with that, and um, we're not going to call that the gospel truth because we just don't know, but uh, it is an interesting thing to think about. But Jesus walks up on them, and so he knew them, and he saw them casting, casting this net, and so... You know, uh, looking here today, I got my fishing poles here, and I, I brought a couple with me. I brought a uh, brought a fishing pole so I can uh, fish for bass, and I brought a fishing pole so I can fish for catfish. So um, I'm I'm going after these fish in a different way. Uh, when they fish, then they used a net. Um, I assume they probably use some hook and line at times, but uh, these guys were uh, real fishermen, so they. They, uh, they threw a net because, like I said, they had to eat and possibly sell at the market and other things like that. So they were going after a big number of fish, but um, they, weren't, uh, they weren't going after one kind of fish. They were going after what they could catch. And I'm going to bring that back around in a moment because I think that's an interesting thing to think about whenever we think about ourselves as disciples of Jesus Christ. So he's walking, he sees them, uh, and it tells us that they were fishermen. Then he goes on in verse 19. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And uh, in, in verse 20, um, it says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now again, a lot of people have a misconception of what this means. They think that uh, this, this was a tremendous amount of faith on their part just to drop everything that they were doing and go and follow Jesus. So one thing we got to remember is that they already knew Jesus. They already had a relationship with him. And uh, they had perhaps already started following and, and teaching him. Jesus had, uh, like any Jewish boy, had, had presumably went through rabbi school uh, and uh, excelled at it. 
and uh, he was teaching in the synagogue. So obviously, if they didn't think that he was a, uh, a qualified teacher, he would have not been able to preach in the synagogue. So he was preaching in the synagogues. And so when he walks up on them and tells them, said, hey, come follow me, uh, they dropped their nets and they followed him. Now, uh, discussing the role of a rabbi in that day and the role of a disciple in the first century, the uh, disciples uh, typically what would happen is is that there would be a particular rabbi that they would want to follow. And so these these uh, would-be disciples, they would go to this rabbi and they say they would uh, uh, come up to him and basically have somewhat of an interview and say, you know, I really want to follow you. I, w I want to be your disciple. And so most of the time the rabbis were very selective as far as who they, uh, who they let uh, be their disciples. Uh, they, they would only pick the, the cream of the crop, those who had excelled uh, perhaps in rabbi school. And so they would go up and they would ask the, the rabbi, can I follow you please? And if the rabbi said yes, then the expectation was is that wherever this rabbi went, because typically the rabbis, they traveled. Uh, they would travel around to the different synagogues or uh, upon request to go and visit uh, a synagogue. Uh, they would certainly do that. They would be like a, almost like a traveling evangelist today. They would go wherever uh, they were asked to go, but they would go and they would teach. And so part of the expectation of that disciple, of this rabbi, was to go and follow this rabbi wherever he went. And so that was the expectation. So whenever Jesus comes and he was already considered a rabbi, he was considered a teacher, when he, when he came up on uh, Peter and uh, his brother Andrew and Jesus said, come, follow me, and they left their nets and followed immediately, uh, that was an expectation that a disciple would have of a rabbi. But Jesus, he reversed it because rabbis typically didn't go to students and ask them to follow me. And certainly a rabbi would have not gone to a uh, fisherman or anyone who had flunked out of rabbi school and asked them to follow him. So what Jesus did was a reversal of kind of the, the, the cultural standards of the day. And so when they, when they were asked, this was like, well, yeah, uh, it was a no-brainer. Uh, this was something that they would have, you know, most Jewish boys would have wanted to have done anyway. So they left and followed Jesus. And another thing that um, I've discussed in some, some previous sermons at Providence and uh, through some Bible studies is one of the things that uh, kind of a, it, it was kind of a slogan or a saying, uh, maybe even perhaps a, a more of a uh, teaching that the rabbis taught um, or it was, it was kind of understood is that whenever a disciple followed a rabbi, the idea was is that whenever a rabbi walked, that uh, the rabbi would kick up dust on these, uh, these dirt roads. And so the idea was is that the, the uh, disciple would follow so closely to the rabbi that the dust that the rabbi kicked up would land on the feet of the disciples. Now think about that. If, if you're walking down a dusty road and you're kicking up dust, someone's going to have to be pretty close behind you to get that dust the dust from the rabbi's feet uh, on your feet. And so there's kind of a visual there of what the expectations are of a disciple. And I don't think that expectation was any different of Jesus, especially with Jesus. Because you know, as, as uh, Jesus is, is, is wanting us to become his disciples, he's expecting us to follow so closely that when he walks, that the dust off of his sandals would also land on our feet. And so that's the, that's the expectation of a uh, disciple uh, to a rabbi. And so there, there's a mutual thing there. A uh, disciple must follow a rabbi wherever he goes. And Jesus talks about this much later uh, in his public ministry. Talks about uh, he, he challenges people about truly following him. When people said, yes, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus gave them an expectation. He said, look, you know, here's what it entails. 
And so that, that message is true for us. Whenever Jesus calls us, he expects us to follow him so closely that the dust off of his feet will land on our feet as well. So I hope that you'll get that visual expectation. Um, and so he says, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now this is perfect. Um, I think this, this is a great way. Uh, I think this is a, a way that uh, Jesus... Uh, Jesus used his surroundings. Uh, this was almost like his PowerPoint uh, uh, illustration. And so he, he used this analogy. You know, they were, they were fishers of, of the sea. And so whenever they cast their nets out, um, they didn't know exactly what they were going to catch. Uh, it, it could be, uh, there might be a, a certain concentration of fish that they were trying to catch. And perhaps they did catch a certain concentration, but they never knew exactly what type of fish they would, that they would catch. And so I think that as disciples, um, you know, we cast this broad net. You know, it's, it's not like today, like I said earlier, I brought my two fishing poles to catch bass and catfish. Uh, these guys, they threw a net. And I think as disciples, sometimes I think, I think uh, as Christians, maybe we try and be too selective. Uh, we try and go after one group, but I think, but I know, I don't think this, I know that what Jesus is saying here is that we're going to cast a broad net over uh, a mixed bag of people here because there, there was a lot of people who lived there. Uh, it, was, uh, it was under Roman occupation, so there was Romans uh, or anyone who wasn't a Jew was considered a Gentile. And so you had all this vast sea of people here of different nationalities ethnicities and things like that and so Jesus said I'm going to make you fishers of men and that that uh, so ladies that was uh, that's a, a general term men and women so he said I'm going to make you fishers of men and women and th this was not just a a selective term this was a broad term casting a broad net over a people who were who were living in darkness you know today that's no different there's a lot of people who live in perpetual darkness. Uh, the, you know, in, in that day, the, some people, uh, some scholars have presumed that there was over 400 synagogues uh, in Israel during the day of Jesus. And so you think about that. There was the, uh, over 400 places of worship there in Israel, and there was so much darkness. And you think about it today. Uh, you, it's hard, you know, when you get in any concentrated uh, uh, area, uh, you know, like where, where I live, Randolph County, uh, they say that there's, uh, I guess by the census or, you know, however they, they compile this, that uh, there's uh, 350 to 400 individual uh, local churches. And so that's just in Randolph County. So, um, it's really not that different than you know what we would be looking at in Israel. So, you know, you've got you've got all these uh, we've got all these churches, but the thing is, is that uh, um, there's like 80 percent of people in Randolph County who are unchurched. We've got all these churches, so what are we doing? You know, Jesus is Jesus has called us as disciples to go and be fishers of men. So are we being fishers of men or, or are we casting a net on a, on a particular group or uh, a particular species, you know, if we're talking about fishing? I think we need to really understand what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is telling us to cast our nets, to go and, and be fishers of men. We obviously have a lot of unchurched people who don't know Jesus. There's a lot of people who haven't even heard the name of Jesus. They've never heard the gospel. And so it's our duty as disciples, if we're saying that we're disciples, it's our job. Jesus has commissioned us as disciples to go out and, and do this and to share the good news, share uh, the, the good news of the kingdom and, and all of that Jesus has done for us all. And so uh, this, this is what he's, he's, he's telling his disciples here, his early disciples. Jesus continues in verse 21. He says, And going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, his, uh, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee with their father, mending their nets. And he called them. 
immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And so here's another instance where uh, Jesus would have known, uh, presumably, that these were also disciples of uh, John the Baptist, and presumably they, they knew Jesus uh, as well. And so uh, they go out, and um, uh, Jesus goes by there and says, hey, come follow me too, and then the same thing happened. So again, this, this would have not been something, uh, it, it did take faith, um, you know, because you, you had to leave your livelihood um, but it wasn't an unusual thing, and it wasn't something um, that, uh, you know, we kind of portray as, you know, you know, they just, it was all blind faith. But it wasn't blind faith. They, they, weren't, uh, they weren't dumb fishermen. They knew exactly what they were doing. And uh, I think this actually gives us a better example uh, because we can know everything. Uh, just like, you know, they, did, they, they knew about Jesus. They, uh, they had an understanding of, of the scriptures. But they could have stayed. They could have stayed right there. You know, they had already flunked out of rabbi school. The rabbis told them, said, hey, we don't want you. But when Jesus came and said, hey, follow me, they got up and left. When Jesus calls us, what do we do? Do we continue fishing? Or do we stop what we're doing? Do we put our nets down? And do we go and follow him? You know, there's a, there's a, uh, a saying about obedience. Uh, partial disobedience is still full disobedience. So when Jesus calls us to follow him, if we're not fully following him, are we disobeying him? And the answer is yes. Jesus wants us to fully follow him. And that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. He's not expecting us to be perfect. He knows we're not perfect. Uh, he created us. So that expectation is off the table. But what he does want is he wants us to fully follow him. Uh, and that comes with mistakes. We're going to make mistakes. I mean, Goodness, look at the disciples. They made all kinds of mistakes. Uh, Peter even denied him uh, three times. And so we know that there's uh, going to be mistakes. But Jesus is, a, is forgiving. Jesus loves us. Jesus knows that we're going to make mistakes. And so he gives us grace. He gives us mercy. And he's going to help us through this journey. When we, when we seek out to truly follow him, he's going to grant us um, that that grace and mercy that we need to fully follow him, knowing that we're not going to be perfect, knowing that we're not going to get it right all the time, but that we keep coming back and, and keep asking him to improve us, to, to learn from our mistakes and keep following him. And so that, if you look at the disciples' journey, uh, the, the, through, through Jesus, with Jesus, and everything that they did, uh, mistakes and all, look at what the disciples accomplished in seemingly impossible circumstances, in a world full of darkness, and even when Jesus was no longer there in physical form, he said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to send something better because he's going to be with you all. And that was of himself. That was uh, the Holy Spirit was Jesus uh, in spirit form. And so, uh, so the disciples had this. They, they had the Holy Spirit. They lived off the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and they... Uh, they manifested what Jesus had taught them into their own personal lives. And they, they went out and they, they cast nets over a broad range of people and led many, many to the Lord. And that's what Jesus calls us to do, is to lead many to the Lord. Now, here's a, here's a few things that, uh, a few things, I've already touched on a couple of these, but Jesus simply asked for obedience and not perfection. So that's what I want everyone to remember is we don't have to be perfect because the perfect one has already died for us. He's already paid the price. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be obedient. And he will help us through that, but we have to follow him and we have to follow him closely. The other thing is, is when we think about fishermen. Fishermen, they have to be courageous sometimes. Uh, and it takes faith. And just like the lake here behind me, now, I know there's fish in there, but I have to have faith that I might catch something. You know, it does, you don't always catch the same amount. You don't always catch the same size. There's a lot of different things. There's different circumstances. There's water temperature, the weather, uh, you know, the seasons, uh, whether fish are spawning or not. So there's a lot of things to take into account. But that does not mean that they won't bite. Uh, it might take some effort. So as as fishermen, 
uh, you've got to be courageous and to have some faith and go out there and try to catch these fish. And so as disciples of Christ and be fishers of men, we also have to be courageous. Another thing is we have to be patient. Uh, I know for a lot of us that's not a strong suit that we have, but we have to be patient. And Christ will grant us the patience because everyone that we meet is not going to accept Jesus in the same way. And so we have to have some level uh, of patience to be able to deal with everyone that we meet and share the gospel with. And we have to know that not everyone is going to accept our message. Uh, Jesus told us this. He promised that, that not everyone would follow him and they wouldn't listen to our message. And so that's just an expectation that we need to have. Another thing is that there has to be some sort of skill. As a fisherman, sometimes you can get lucky, but as a fisherman, you tend to get better with practice. Disciples are no different. Uh, disciples of Christ, you know, again, we don't have to be perfect. Uh, the, there's that, uh, that saying, a lot of people say it's cliche, but I think it's really good, is that uh, Christ doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. All right? And so when Jesus calls us to be disciples of Christ, uh, we don't have to be perfect. That part, we will work on that as we follow him. As we're obedient to his message, as we're obedient to his spirit and walk in faith and in love and, and seek to reach people, he's going to work on that for us. He's going to help us with that, but we have to be faithful and at least walk in that, uh, in that way. And so there takes a little bit of skill, and we get that because we dig into the word. God wants us, Jesus wants us to dig into his word. He wants us to study his word, and as we do that, the Holy Spirit will uh, unveil things to us that maybe we hadn't seen before when we're ready for it the Holy Spirit's going to unleash that for us and he's going to give us this he's going to help us along our journey and as we lead people so uh, you know as fishermen uh, he leads us there has to be a certain uh, skill level uh, you know when I was younger uh, to use this example when I was younger and I didn't know that much about fishing all I thought you did is that you threw, you threw your line out to the deepest part of the water and that's where the biggest fish were. But I, I learned that as I got older, that was not the case. And that uh, you would, uh, when you fished, a lot of times it was around the edges. And so um, you fished around the edges, you find out where the fish are, you fish around logs, things like that. So you get better at it and you learn how to catch, you learn how to catch fish. The same thing is true with people. You learn over time the Holy Spirit helps you. Another thing is that soul winning, it demands skill too. We've got to work together because even though we're individual, we're individual members, we are one body of Christ. And so we have to keep that in mind. It uh, takes cooperation. And we got people rolling in uh, for our picnic today, so I'm going to uh, wrap this up. Uh, but most of all, fishing demands faith. As fishermen, most of the time we can't see the fish and we're not sure of what we're going to catch. But it requires faith and it requires alertness and it requires uh, that uh, we just be obedient. There will be times we might fail, but the Word of God never fails. So that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm going to try and get a little fishing in before the picnic starts. God bless.